<laughs> Nobody's worried that I don't know. I just look tiger... back. <laughs> Come on, Felix. You know, nobody's worried. Nobody's worried that a Bengal tiger is going to appear out of nowhere and just start mauling us to death. Look, no time, no space, to matter equals nothing. Now, the only, the only explanation for that kind of reality comes from the Bible. Now, here's something else I would argue. We're having a discussion right now, right? Yes. Yes, we're having a discussion. We're using a little tool in our minds called logic. Now, I've got to ask you guys a question. Do you know what the laws of logic are? Basically, yeah. Okay, you know that the law of excluded middle, the law of identity, and the law of non-contradiction? Not quite sure. Okay, well, let me give you an I example. Probably, of I the probably law of understand them, but may not know what you would call them. Okay, that's fine. Well, I'll, I'll make it an easy example. Hey, Felix. Felix, I'm, um, I'm holding in my right hand a pair of headphones. And, Felix, I am not holding a pair of headphones in my right hand at the same time. What do you think of that? You are and you're not. I guess that's illogical. It's contradictory. It's contradictory. One statement contradicts the other. It contradicts, right? Yeah. Now, why do we know that? Why do we know the law of non-contradiction? It's a law. It's true for everyone, everywhere, at all times. In other words, would I be able to go to 8th century China and pull that concept off? I mean, could I go to them in the 8th century China, pull the, I don't know, whatever they would recognize there, uh, an animal. I'm holding a small animal in my right hand, and I'm not holding a small animal in my right hand at the same time. What do you think 8th century Chinese people would say about that? They'd probably say you're drunk. Okay, let's go to first century. First century Ethiopian person. And I'm going to go up to a first century Ethiopian person, and I'm going to grab something that they know. Let's, uh, let's just say a, a rag of some sort. I'm holding a rag in my right hand and not holding a rag in my right hand at the same time in the same sense. Same contradiction. What would they say? Again, it's a contradiction. Okay, they, so they would agree, and you would agree, that it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, and what time in history you belong. The law of non-contradiction applies for everyone, everywhere, at all times. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Now, the only place that you find a consistent argument for that is in the biblical God. And here's the other problem. <clears throat> if that law is a law, is it made out of matter? Could evolution explain what the law of non-contradiction is? Let's start with you, Mark. What do you think? Do you think that evolution could explain a non-physical law? No. How would it explain it? It couldn't, right? No. Because, because the law, why? Well, because that law is not made out of matter. So guess what, you guys? Not only was there... In the beginning, nothing. Then God created out of nothing. He was the first cause, uncaused. He created everything. But guess what he set in motion? He set in motion the minds and the hearts of people. And he made them, are you ready for this? In his image. And guess where that's consistent? You're right again, the Bible. The Bible says in Genesis 1.26, I believe, don't quote me on that, but it says that God made man in his image. So the reason you know, the reason you know, and the Chinese person knows, and the Ethiopian knows, that the law of non-contradiction works, is because they and you and I are all a reflection, are you ready? On how God thinks. And the only way you can explain 
the non-physical law of the law of non-contradiction is if God truly exists. Anything outside of God, like evolution, does not work with reality. Because evolution is a chemical process. In other words, if you're a man, well, there's a couple, you got to correctly define evolution because all evolution means is change. And there are different kinds of evolution. There are the kinds of evolution where people believe it's called macro evolution. This is noteworthy. Macro evolution says that an ape turned into a human. Okay, so one animal species, one animal species turned into another animal species. That's a, that's a Darwinianism evolution, okay, the father of evolution. He believed that life forms, starting from the very beginning, from that, that ooze, created a life form that eventually evolved into human beings. That's one way you can look at evolution. Another way you can look at evolution is called microevolution, and that microevolution is small changes, tiny, microscopic, for an animal to adapt in its environment. So in other words... Uh, when Darwin found uh, the finches, he noted that some finches were found with shorter beaks and some finches were found with longer beaks. But can I ask you guys a quick question? Sure. Did they still produce a finch? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I... I think it still exists. Right. Well, I'm, sure. I'm asking you if you think that if that proves macroevolution, that just because a finch had a long beak and then all of a sudden it has a shorter beak or vice versa, does that prove macroevolution? Well, it might prove, uh, you know, at some point in time, I mean, you know, man had gills because he came at it, well, again, not from a biblical point of view but from an evolutionary point of view what how do you know that he had bills well what i'm i'm trying to say that you know you were talking about finches and beaks etc maybe at one point Mm -hmm. the finch needed the big beak and now it's obsolete so it has changed through but you're missing Yeah, Mark, you're missing what I'm saying, though. Listen, just because a finch has a long beak or a short beak is irrelevant. The finch didn't produce a hippopotamus. It didn't grow gills. It always produced a finch, just like bacteria. There are many different kinds of bacteria, and you can crossbreed bacteria and watch it evolve into different things, but it still produces more bacteria. In other words, naturalism or macroevolutionists have a problem. And if you're somebody who believes in macroevolution, I need you to listen to this carefully. Evolution, in the macro sense, does not and will never work. We have many, many, many fossil records, millions of fossil records. And uh, I had somebody argue with me. They said, well, Chad, don't you know that there's many fossil records? I said, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's lots of fossils. There's fossils that animals had longer toes than others. Some had longer beaks than others. But you know what they found? And they said, what's that? They produced their own kind. And that's consistent, right again, with the Bible. The Bible says that God made them, not of their own species, because there's many different kinds of species or uh, various kinds of animals. He says he made them of their own kind. And that's important. So you'll never see, consistent with reality, you will never see a hippopotamus producing a bird. And you'll never see a whale producing a beak. You will always see a whale producing another whale. And that is consistent with the Bible. So that's more points for the Bible. So what you guys, I hope that you're seeing this, Mark and uh, Felix, I hope that you see that the Bible is a tool we can look at to see the realities of life, the life that we know. I don't care who came up with what theory. Just because you have a theory doesn't make it true. I mean, I can believe in the flying spaghetti monster, but that doesn't mean that the flying spaghetti monster exists. (laughs) You know what I mean? 
It has to be consistent to reality. The reality of life is that when, when I procreate with my wife, I produce more children. I don't produce apes. I don't produce mice. I don't produce uh, giraffes. And that'll be an interesting birth. Um, you, you know, uh, you produce of your own kind. Well, but uh, what 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 Darwin was saying, I I think, is that uh, you talk about survival of the species. When you when you look at mm-hmm. the evolutionary development of man, okay, uh-huh. um, man is only producing another man. He's not producing uh, a bird, an elephant, a snake. Okay, the changes that come about come about because through evolutionary changes, man no longer needs, uh, man can now walk erect. Man no longer needs gills because he's no longer living in the water. Okay. Um, But that's just simply not consistent with reality. Excuse me? Yeah. Listen, did oxygen, was oxygen different? Millions no, but, of years ago. But, what's, what? but the okay. But, if oxygen man, wasn't any different, but, then how was? Go ahead. I was just going to say, but man, as a species of fish, came from the water. Mm-hmm. It lived in the water. When mm-hmm. it came up on land, it no longer needed the gills that it used to breathe oxygen while underwater. Um. Now, who knows what man is going to look like uh, th- thousands of years from now. Okay, we may not look the way we look now. You know, I, I honestly but there's no, can't see... Mark? What? Yeah, there's no, there's no... That's not only consistent, inconsistent with reality, but it doesn't... There's no proof for that. Listen, there is no fossil record. But now, they claim they have found them. And there's a few of them. Like an example would be Lucy the, the ape, right? Remember right. they found a chimp yeah. that looked like it was Homo erectus and it, was, it had bigger hips and this and that. Well, what they found out, and they actually concluded this a long time ago, but it's still in our textbooks today for God only knows why. But what they found out that Lucy was just a chimp that had arthritis in her bones. So it was... It wasn't a transitional form of chimp. It wasn't a chimp transforming into a human or, or the missing link, if you would. It was just a chimp that had problem with its bones. It was the same thing with a tooth that they found. They found a tooth from a pig, but they claimed it was bone from a transitional form into human of some sort. Uh, that, that's, that's the record of macroevolution. It's full of that stuff where... They have been, trust me, if science has really found, it would be everywhere. It would be the biggest news in history. It it would close down churches left and right. There is no proof for macroevolution because that would be inconsistent with the Bible. The Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and he created everything in it in six literal days. So when you have an inconsistency like macroevolution, that's the problem that most scientists, or, or at least materialists, I can't say all scientists, some scientists are Christians. But that's, that is what science has found. They're, they're, they haven't found a, a consistency with evolution. Now, they found lots of fossil records of macro, well, micro changes. You know, like long beaks, short beaks, different color fur, different size bones. Um, some animals grew longer legs. Some grew longer antennas, but they always produce their own kind. You, do you do you understand? Am no, I making I'm, any I'm sense? I'm following you. In okay. Words, okay. Uh, I want uh, the the you know uh, a certain species might change the color of or over years uh, develop a different color in its fur because it has to blend in with a different background. That's right. You know, yeah, and there's basically. something wrong with saying there's something wrong with saying that a that a species has to adapt to its environment. Uh, we do <laughs> as humans, don't we? I mean, right. if we move into a 
the colder and 